Okay, our last segment of Mary K. Moose Mask. And the last one we're going to do, I got a few pages, but when time runs out, time runs out. We're going to do about Christmas. Christmas. Mary K. Moose Mask. The counterfeit mystery religion of Babylon, which began with the worship of Esther, Esther, Isis, Estarte, Astra, Easter, Mary, found expression in many different forms in the different cultures of the world. Nimrod and his mother were originators of the worship upon the earth. Just reading through here. The Babylonians in the proper religion worship a goddess, mother, and a son. Representing pictures and images as a mother with her son in her arms. The Babylonian this worship of the mother and child spread through the earth. The original Babylon mo mother goddess was Semiranus. The adorable little child in her arms was Nimus, Nimrod, Tamuz. So don't give me put Christ back in Christmas. Jesus Christ was never in Christmas. Tamus and his mother, Simaranus. A Babylonian worship. It does not belong in a Christian home. It does not belong in a Christian church. But we got a free will. This same little child was also signified as the husband of Simaranus. Oh, the mother has a baby and marries a baby. Oh. In the decline of Babylon, the religion was transported to Egypt and worshipped her son, Orisis, otherwise known as Horus. The same mother and child deities appeared in pagan Rome as Potana and Jupiter. Greece, it was Greece in, her, in the great mother. The babe at her breast was Irene, the goddess of peace. The boy was Plutus in his arm. They adopted by the Holy Roman Empire the worship as Mary as a Madonna and the child. Mary, Christ Mass. You spell it wrong. It's supposed to be M A R Y, not M E R R Y. <clears throat> and Mary is the mother of God. Council of Ephesus, 431 A.D. Some of this I'm just not going to do. December 25th was the original, originally determined by the Roman Empire as the Winter Solstice, 46 A.D. Being the Julian calendar, not the current Julian calendar, was not our current December 25th, it was January 5th. It was a celebration of the birthday of the Nativity of the Sun, S-U-N. It was not to the calendar revision, it went to December 21st. The tradition of Martha, M-I-T-H-R-A, as a sun god, had come to Rome from Persia, 274 A.D. The 25th of December was established as the festival of the Invisible Sun, capital S-U-N, by the Emperor Aurelia, R-U-R-E-L-I-N, <coughs> excuse me, N. The Emperor Constantine declared Christianity as a new form or in faith of the Roman Empire early in the 4th century, gave the holiday entirely a new name, entirely a new meaning. It was the celebration of Roman gods, Egyptian gods, Babylonian gods, and your Christmas came from Constantine. You know, the guy that seen the, the vision of the, was the cross or something in the sky, and it You got no business as a born-again, Bible-believing Christian 
in this mess called Christmas. And then you're going to say, well, put Christ back in Christmas. He was never there. It's Mary Tamu's mess. Britain, B-R-I-T-O-N-S, Celts, Europeans, Indians, Egyptians, all part of the Roman Empire at one time, these nations brought their own sun-worshipping tradition. S-U-N. All the people in the empire, save a few, gathered in their homes to drink wine and dance and sing, light their candles and exchange presents giving their children little clay dolls that represented former human sacrifices to the god Saturn. Eating to the festive, eating to the excess, festive meals, drinking, sexual indulgence of fertility rights, and general debauchery, which was the norm on December 25th. Don't put Christ in a pagan holiday worship. Three days of religious observance of Christianity, Sun, S-U-N, Day, Easter, Star, and Christmas have a origin in Mithraic, M-I-T-H-R-A-I-C, Sun Worship, and were introduced, which became the Catholic Church at the time. Constantine outlawed Sabbath observance, which continue up to this time, and introduced fertility rites, and Esther, Easter, eggs and bunnies, into the Passover observance of Christ's death and resurrection. Easter and Christmas has nothing to do with the Bible, but Constantine and Egypt and Babylonian, and Catholic, and Rome. And now that you've heard these videos, you can tell God, no, you can't tell God, I never knew. I didn't know it was a sin. Well, I sent my servant Stiley, and he taught you exactly what it is. Christmas trees, as found in Jeremiah chapter 10, early Babylonian custom to go out and place a gift on a tree at winter solstice, December 25th, offered to Tammuz Nimrod, told you save the best for last, who was after his death, believed to be the sun, S-U-N. In, in ancient Babylon, these gifts were placed in groves on the winter solstice. Solstice. The Christmas tree represents Nimrod to the ancient sun worshippers, Jeremiah chapter 10. The sunrise service involved branches were even found in Ezekiel 8, 17. With their backs even at Jehovah's temple. Sunrise service Christmas trees are found in the Old Testament. How about pastor tell me, Jeremiah chapter 10, that's not the Christmas tree. Open your eyeballs. I had a church one time, we went from Jeremiah chapter 9 to Jeremiah chapter 11. We were at the time of Christmas, and over there on the piano of that church was a mini Christmas tree. I wonder why we skipped Jeremiah chapter 10. <clears throat> Many pagan cultures used to cut boughs of evergreen trees in December and move them into the house or temple and decorate them with gold balls. Modern day pagans still do it. Evergreen trees came to symbolize everlasting life and resurrection power of the God they worship who was Nimrod. Tammuz. Putting tinsel around the tree comes to a practice tying a ribbon around the tree as a prayer to the sun, S-U-N. The similar practice was a sculpture raised in an obelisk, a phallic symbol, 
next to a tree as an altar for the god, small g-o-d, represented by the tree. The Rashum, A-S-H-E-R-U-M, were considered altars where animals and humans were ritually sacrificed. The altar was often a tree stump with the trunk snapped off, leaving jagged spikes like splinters. Christmas tree phenomena is also a type of altar where gifts and offerings are praised. You better believe your Christmas and Easter are a pagan sin that if we confess our sins he's faithful enough to faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness the solstice tree is drawn directly from the pagan worship rendered for public consumption the tree worship is the most prominent feature however the serpent gets involved also it seems that the adversary has the tree and the serpent seared into his mind. The serpent wrapped around a stump is one of the symbols we find used in ancient pagan religion. <clears throat> Reeds and garlands of greenly were also hung on the doors of homes as emblems of the sun, S-U-N. Every good sun worship had a round reef on the door of their home. The use of holly making leaves of laurel branches twisted into a circle symbol the sun. Nimrod was associated with Greenlee who worshipped as a sun idol after he was slain and the reefs made into round solar shapes were emblems of him. Everyone that exchanged gifts and drunken party was everywhere. The color red was a symbol symbolic for the sun to bring into mind heat. The obvious combination of green and red in the Christmas theme. In the year 525, diocese. D-I-O-N-Y-S-U-S E-X-I-G-U-U-S -E A monk, Dennis the Little, came to Rome coming upon the time of Solstice Feast Festival when the people were celebrating the birthday to the sun. He was shocked and dismayed, reason that it was impossible to stand in the way of the frenzy fever. He was shocked at what was going on at the sun worship. Sun worship. Tamus. That's it. That's it. We're done. I got references and all the names of people that have been involved in this report. So, Mary Tamuz Mass, December 25th, the winter solstice was celebrated long before Jesus was born in Bethlehem and after. It was celebrated by the Babylonians, the Egyptians, all the world around, and the Roman Empire and the Catholic Church as the Sun, S-U-N worship. There were human sacrifices. There were sexual orgies. Orgies. There was such just get eat, eat, drink, and be happy, and here's your present. And it is forbidden in the scriptures of God. 
And we also find a tree, the Christmas tree. We also find a sunrise service. And we find the Esther service, the Easter service. We find them in the Bible forbidden, called abominations by God. I'm going to tell you right now, you got a free will. But I'm going to tell you the celebration of, of Christmas, the celebration of Mary Tamu's Mass is a sin. And if you continue to do it, it will be wood, hay, and stubble for you at the judgment seat of Christ. This message has been brought by God, the Holy Spirit, with the information of the names of the people who know what they're talking about. Their names are given on the report. You can download it off our family website. It goes right along with our ISTAR, Easter in Disguise. Thank you for listening.